You're back. Good. What can I help you with? What can I help you with? She takes a sip from her silvery thermal cup. Gorgeous. Everything about you so elegant, Joyce. So, uh, about my missing badge, perhaps? I forget which dialogue option was the one where she was like, I would love to speak with you, but let's do this by the book. Go get your badge first. But we'll start with Everard Clare. I will let him know that he has accused her of mercenary action. Which, I mean, she's probably guilty of, let's be honest. You have? And how did you like Mr. Clare? Um... He made me sit... in, <laughs> in a very uncomfortable chair. And it hurt my little bottom, Joyce. I didn't like it. Ah, uh, he's a beautiful man. Beautiful and just. Everard Clare is a hero of the workers' movement, and yet he... he seems to be uh, taking the lion's share of the union dues, I guess is the way I would say it. Uh, he's a bloated rainbow socialist. I can do business with him. For a socialist, he's reasonable. He is not the champion I have chosen, and I wish to swear fealty to you and the cause of capital. I have the feeling... The international community does not approve of him. It's not important if I liked him. I was just doing my job. Quite a few options as to how we feel about Everard Clare. I guess the most, um... Or rather least, I should say, impactful option, perhaps be... Oh, I have the feeling the international community does not approve of him. Let's see what she says to that. Oh, come on now. He has his uses. How else would he have stayed in power all these years? Or wait, actually... She answers her own question. Corruption. That's how he's done it. Fantastic, verm-like corruption. Reaching into the bowels of the earth. She looks at the ground and nods. Joyce, I love the way that you say verm-like. The position of my unusual colleague does not reflect official policy. I hope you understand. The RCM does not pick sides. But what if we... What if we need to pick sides, Lieutenant Kim? What if people are being hurt and we need to pick sides? Of course. And I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I'm not a corrupt verm myself. However, if you felt like discussing something... Just discussing something. We're not taking sides. It's all cash. It's cash here on the boat. How could I stop you? 
Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be gossiping. <laughs> Perfectly timed. Animated sip after she said gossiping. It was just great. Good afternoon. Nice to see you there. Welcome, welcome. Intellectually speaking, it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about these things. I agree. Yes, your disgusting necktie agrees completely. Let's gossip. <laughs> so that money you gave me, would that make things, um, weird if I shared information? I mean, well, Mr. Everard is helping me find my gun. Are you threatening to pop? I thought I heard a small pop. I'm going to reset it, just in case. Be right back with you. Nothing worse than when something is threatening to pop. Especially if it's your tummy after a full Thanksgiving meal. Uh, I helped Mr. Everard turn up the heat on the borscht. Is, th is that the kind of gossip you're after? He asked me to open a door. He asked me to deliver an envelope. These are all true things. Mm, the money you gave me, would that make things weird? weird? Oh no. One of the positive things to come from the revolution is the unhindered exchange of information, you see. Even when it comes to trade secrets. Mm. Everything's true. Nothing is forbidden. Which isn't to suggest our talks constitute corporate espionage. Even if they did, it would be fine. But they don't, since you logged the money as a donation, and this is clearly just gossip between friends. Oh, yeah, I definitely, um, logged that money as a donation on my official uh, tax forms. I didn't, uh, just use it under the table and tell no one. You're right, the Joyce. Lieutenant might have, but I don't remember you logging anything as anything, Harry. I tried to. To be fair to me and my absolute train wreck of a life, I did try to. I searched and searched the radio dialogue for a way to uh, announce that I had taken bribes. Okay, um... I don't know how much I want to tell her. It's Joyce. I want to tell her everything. And, and gently uh, waltz with her under the moonlight. But uh, should I? Should I waltz with her under the moonlight? I'm not sure. I did help him turn the heat up on the borscht. I think that's pretty safe did to say. Did you now? What sort of She's borscht intrigued. is he making? He's a little confused. Uh, the cook makes it to keep the strikers drunk, and it helps them strike. However, I sabotaged it and did not add any vodka. I don't know if that would be akin to corporate... Corporate? No. Corporate espionage. <laughs> I tried to combine them. It's unimportant, Borscht. I want to be honest with you, Joyce. I... <sighs> but this is really, really picking sides now. And if I'm going to pick a side, which is against my... Against my nature in this game... It should probably be for the side of communism! So I'm going to say it's unimportant, Borscht. But it hurts me deeply, Joyce. You You're right, that. Detective. That whole undertaking was very unimportant. Why did we do it? Those acts born of sympathy for the working man. I set fire to the fumes of struggle. Those fumes must be very potent if you set fire to them. I worship Al Ghul in many ways. It's uninteresting. I thought it would make the broth taste better. <laughs> Actually, I turned the knob like this. <gasps> Turn the heat down. Their borscht will be cold, Joyce. High five me for capitalism. Um, I, I just thought it would make the broth taste better. I wanted to very be involved. Very curious. A very curious thing to do. <laughs> Strange that you even mentioned it. You've been so vague. I know. I know, Joyce. There was secret information there that I can't Truly, share with you. But that's how he operates. He just does things, man, and then talks about them, even if it's inappropriate. Mm. At 
consider my little wrist slapped. Thank you. strange Lieutenant. equanimity has overtaken the lieutenant. He's just going with the flow now. Easier that way. What else? <sighs> All right. Mr. Everard is helping me find my gun. But what I mean by that is he's effectively extorted me, taken advantage of my dr drug infused state uh, several nights back, in which I pawned my gun for drinking money. And he won't give it back unless I deliver little envelopes for him. It's all very complicated, so I, I better not even mention that. I'd rather talk about something else for now, if you don't mind, though, again, it pains of me. Of course, first. Detective. Should something come up later, down the road, don't be afraid to drop by for a chat. I'm never afraid to drop by for a chat, but now, Until on then, to the meat of the matter. Is there anything I can help you with? Hey, about my missing I'm afraid bed. I can't say any more until we've taken care of formal protocol. Ah, uh, you'll never guess what I found. My badge! I do, I do kind of want to try this. A dirty alliance, question mark. What? I didn't know we were in a dirty alliance. Hello, and oh hey hey. You've slipped in in the corner of my eye. Hello there. It's so nice to see you guys. Um, on the off chance that this will give me XP, I'd like to take it, but I do just have my badge. I, but maybe just showing her my badge will give me the same amount of XP. Here's my badge, Did Joyce. You? Wonderful. Yay. She inspects the piece of blue plastic, the faded green pearls of her eyes. Gorgeous. Scanning left to right. It is a relief to see a double Euphrater here. The situation is precarious, to say the least. It needs a quick solution, or we will have a bloodbath on our hands. Alright, I've already heard about a connection between the lynching and the strike, but I need your testimony. Spill it. You said contain the situation. Mm, I would like to do both. Let's try to start with contain the situation, question yes. mark. I'm afraid this strike may descend into a small-scale civil war, with possible consequences for all of Rivershall West. Please excuse, you're wrapped up in some Ragnarok. Shout if you need me. I need you, Lark! I'm desperate! My, my loins are quivering? I, maybe that's too much information. I hope you enjoy your Ragnarok. Since you are sharing, man, this is also the RCM's worst-case scenario. Then we're on the same page, as grim as it may be. Oh, good. So, I've already heard about a connection. Between the hanged man and the strike, tell me, what do you think I of this? I have an indirect role to play, I'm sad to say. My employer experienced a momentary lapse of faith in me. In that moment, they elected to deploy a private military contractor as an insurance measure. They called it my security detail. Comment was made all the worse, or all the better, by having my phone on my lap. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I quivered. Must have been uncomfortable. A uh, momentary lapse of faith, how could anyone doubt you for even a single moment, Joyce? Look at your perfectly placed hairs. Do you need a security detail? They were dispatched after I relayed the Union's initial offer. Hmm, did not go over well with the higher Every ups. worker... A member of the board. I tried to convince my employer it was simply a piece of rhetoric, or a joke. They did not appreciate the humor. So I know there's like a completely unauthorized uh, thug squad going around, feeding folks, putting them in trees, after they may or may not have already been dead. But do you need a security detail? I mean, come on. Just the imminent threat of death is Absolutely all. Absolutely not. These mercenaries are muscle, pure and simple. They are meant to intimidate the Union into surrendering. Who are they, exactly? Cronel, an Oranese military company. As far as I know, three arrived in Martinez. They report to me sporadically, but they do not answer to me. To be frank, our relationship is deteriorating. They wear ceramic armor, have semi-automatic weapons and years of combat experience. They also have trauma and stressor disorder, and no idea how to conduct themselves in an urban civilian environment. 
That does not sound helpful to the situation so at hand. So, what happened? The story is, one of them, the Colonel, I don't know his real name, sexually assaulted a local woman while he was drunk and separated from his unit. This allowed some of the more militant Union members to subdue him. He was taken out behind the whirling in rags and lynched last Sunday night. That does seem to be the story that's going around. And if true, hooray, he's dead. Um, but what about the gunshot to the face? I'm still confused about the gunshot to the face. Nothing. Mr. Clare refuses to let me into the harbor. I have not been able to discuss this matter with anyone there. The remaining two Cronell contractors carry out their orders. For now. Where are they? I don't believe we've run into any ceramic-clad, um... Burly boys, let's call them. It, where are they staying? It's a smokescreen. In secret, they are conducting an independent military tribunal into the lynching. Once this investigation is concluded, executions will follow. But this is my jurisdiction. What is the nature of this so-called investigation? This is mine and Lieutenant Kim's jurisdiction. They can't just go executing folks. Whether to execute one, some, or all of the Union militants. Seems like it sure would be uh, convenient for the capitalist faction if all of the Union militants were to were to be executed. I have to say, this is not disco. <laughs> Maybe the investigations can team up, you know, share resources and intelligence. Nah, well, let's not pollute our case. Boy, oh boy, is that not good. You've made a mess here, that's silly. Joyce had little to do with it. Uh, I have to say, this is not It disco. is very far from disco. My only hope is that you provide a single, concrete suspect before the mercenaries indiscriminately pick theirs. Simply put... She grabs hold of the mainsail. It's oddly inspiring. If you don't pin this on someone good and do it fast, they will identify and execute everyone present at the lynching. This in turn will force the Union to respond. They would have to, to project strength and power. If this will give me a little bit of uh, leverage in my negotiations with Titus Hardly. Because he's like, oh, I'm not going to tell you anything, but if I'm like, come on, be honest with me, or in a couple of days, two ceramic goons are going to kill all of you. So... Please work with me now. The debarder have over 2,000 men. It will be a thousand to one. Have you ever seen a hornet invade a beehive, Lieutenant? It's not pretty. Especially a hornet with semi-automatic weapons. Oh, you recently subscribed to the Sleepless Sanctuary and got to listen to you narrate the story There's Something Wrong Happening in Las Vegas. I just wanted to commend you on your performance. It's one of my favorites so far. Thank you very much. I don't know if I remember the content of that story at this point, though I definitely recall the name. And I am incredibly grateful for your patronage. That is so kind of you. I will have to look that one up. The Serai's giant hornet, the world's second largest insect, can kill 40 honeybees a minute, while a group of 30 can decimate an entire hive of 20,000 bees in less than four hours. It's a very appropriate uh, metaphor for what's These happening. These men work in tandem using semi and fully automatic firearms. Their armor is virtually impenetrable to muzzle-loaded weapons, even yours. Most Union workers don't have guns at all. As I said, a bloodbath. Yeah, we're going to have to do everything we can to avoid that outcome. Um, I can't see it happen. Too many things would have to go wrong first. Really? Really? You're that naive, Harry? Isn't this a pretty uh, bleak scenario you're describing? I hope. Perhaps. Nope. I think the confrontation is inevitable, and I have two days. Or however many days it is I have. Yeah, I, I believe you, Joyce. I believe you. This does not sound good. It doesn't good. have to be like this. 
Lieutenant W. Freighter Dubois. She looks at you, her eyes damp, but only from the wind. I'm not getting emotional about the ongoing situation. It's the wind. One single concrete suspect delivered into civil court, and I may be able to defuse this situation. All right. Uh, what can you tell me about Grinnell? Not much. Their public resume is relatively good, as far as private military contractors go. I believe they were once called Downwell. That's where we're going to Down push them. Deep black well. <laughs> Thanks, Inland Empire. You really cemented the they point. They a long list of clients: Saint Baptiste, Welchman Lorenz, Eintracht. A warning sign, however. The operations concerned all take place in third or fourth world countries. Guarding facilities, escort missions, and such. And now they're in Martinez, so little has changed, Meaning I guess. they're used to operating in war zones. Yes. All the good conflict corridors, Supramundi, Yesut, the Seminese Islands, countries that don't have a good record reporting atrocious military conduct on their soil. Hmm, how convenient for them. Okay, anything else you have Sadly, on them? Sadly, no. Before this happened, I had little interest in them. Now that I do... I don't have the resources. She thinks it's if gorgeous. If you still have access to the ICP's database, you could run a better background check than I ever could. It may take some time, though. Mm, and I should get it started immediately. Do you know a lot about the inner workings of the RCM and the ICP, ma'am? In my line of work, it pays to do your research. I was prepared to deal with the RCM. I did not think I'd be dealing with a group like Crenell. Any chance you could contact the company and tell them to call the mercenaries I off? I have. And they will. However, these orders take time to reach what is basically a rogue unit out in the field here. Until they do, it's all on us. She's being truthful. She is pressing them as hard as she can. And I dearly appreciate that about Joyce. She always presses them as hard as she can. You said the deceased assaulted a woman. Well, he didn't. This is information passed on to me from some teenagers loitering around the canal. I cannot testify by it. Uh, who did the passing the on? The remaining contractors. Their tribunal. It's what they believe. And what did the teenagers say in that full? That the man was killed because he assaulted a local woman. I've asked around a bit. This seems to be the accepted story around Martinez. It's definitely what we heard from the Hardly Boys. The lieutenant consults his notebook, his eyebrows knitted in concentration. <gasps> Kim, I didn't know you knitted. A great hobby. Uh, we haven't heard any reports about an assault in connection with the lynching. Where did it take place? And when? We have, Kim. Did I accidentally have that conversation when he wasn't with me? Because we definitely have. That, that's what Titus reported. Last Sunday night, at the Whirling in Rags, the hostel by the gates. Supposedly, the colonel was drunk. Maybe on narcotics, too. Either way, he's alleged to have sexually assaulted a woman. Sometime later, a group of dock workers got their hands on him. Do you know the name of the that's woman? That's a good question, officer. I don't have the slightest idea. As I said, it's a rumor. About a rumor. In any case, it's what the Colonel's remaining colleagues believe. You meet her soon enough, you feel. This Colonel, the one who was hanged, did you know if him? If you mean, did I see him alive? Yes. But I did not know him. Do you have a list of his fears? His daily schedule? Perhaps what Cologne he wears? You don't know how you know. It's not written on her face, nor in her voice, but she had sympathy for this man. You liked him? Liked is a bit strong. He... He was the most charismatic among them. He handled all the talking. His departure left a major gap in the group's communication skills. And do you know his name? Lely. 
his service name. A nom de guerre, most likely. He wouldn't divulge his full name. Only one of them did. A bad sign if there ever was one. Really? Tell me the... Tell me about the one whose full name and list of fears you one know. One is a man. Corty, they call him. A nickname as well. The other a woman. Phyllis DePaul. Corty is the gunner, I believe. DePaul is a radio operator. I'm DePauled by this what information. What would you say was his eye color? The deceased's. She closes her eyes, trying to picture the man's face, then shakes her head. I can't remember. There is a pang of regret to her the voice. The lieutenant was testing her, asking a small detail first to see if she knew him better than she let on. She passed. Mm. That's all right, then. Anything else? Nationality? What would you say was his age? He was 40. Or 50. It's hard to say which. He had a combat injury on his lower jaw. It made it difficult to estimate his age. Or gauge his facial expressions. He was always smiling. Indeed. This matches the dental reconstruction we saw on the body. What else? Nationality? Accent? He was, uh, occidental, I think. Light brown hair. A mixed accent. Or an ease. Or Mycenaean, maybe. His injury gave him an accent all his own. In a way, it was humanizing. He had to learn to speak through it. Through the injury. That's all I know, I guess. I only met him once. You were missing one legendary chest in the abandoned village in Vanaheim, where there are no fast travel points anywhere near. 500 meter trek to and from Freyer's camp. At least you you got to canoe for hours up and down the so much canoeing. <laughs> I'm glad you found it. So where are the two remaining mercs now? They've gone to ground, as it were. I don't recommend seeking them out. For one, they're almost certainly armed to the teeth. And for two? They don't have the same respect for the Revachol citizens' militia as I do. To put it bluntly, they think you're vigilantes. Ghetto savages. It will not be a fruitful meeting. I mean, d d they have a point. I've met me, and it's pretty vigilantes. accurate. Vigilantes. You're a professional officer of the only legitimate authority in Revachol. I'm offended, and will stand up for myself, even though Joyce didn't have this opinion. No, it's fine. Uh, we still need to know where they are. We will confront them directly. Okay, we'll steal clear. Steal clear. Sure, yeah, for the moment. We still need to know where they are. You're though. likely to run into them eventually. When that happens, I'll be in a better position to mediate if I don't appear involved. Ninety-two percent chance of just convincing her to tell me anyway, or I can say we'll steer clear for the moment. I, I would, I would like to know. It's a red check that cannot be retried. We're rolling the dice. This is so embarrassing. Aww. You have no idea. There's something wrong with your brain. Luckily, the lieutenant still has his. <laughs> Ma'am, with all due respect. I've been around Martinez, and there's a giant hulk of a man in ill-fitting clothes at the harbor gates. Mr. Right to Work. His heart really isn't in it. Not a terribly good actor, that one. Still. And the other one, the pole, must be in one of the four-story buildings overlooking the roundabout. She was reporting back to you while we were canvassing the lorry drivers. Thank God you're here, Lieutenant Kim, and so observational. I would afford a good vantage point. Still, I hope you heed my advice. There's no need to kick the hornet's nest. Yeah, sure. So how much time do we have, do you suppose, until the war breaks until out? Until the executions start? Truthfully, I don't know. It depends on their progress identifying the members of the lynch mob and their impatience. They don't report their progress to you? Not on this matter. I'm afraid they consider this a personal initiative. 
There is a brief silence, and all across the bay it's nothing but Five days, not more. Maybe sooner. Five days. I'm on day three now, so by like day eight, effectively. Let's say by day seven to be safe. If I haven't completely solved the case, we're in big trouble. All right. Though sometimes, um, like for example, if I was to have passed that logic check on day one, when we first met Joyce, would it still have said five days? In which case, day five is, <laughs> is when the war breaks out. Sometimes it's a little hard to tell. So uh, let's say by day five, if we haven't solved the case. It's a matter of days, not weeks. Do our best. All right. Thank you for all that information, Joyce. You've been a beacon of hope in my dumpster fire of a life. That's enough for now. I am sorry to have been the bearer of bad news. If there is anything else so. I can help you with, please ask. Now that I have my badge and we're on more intimate terms, you and I... Cheek kiss? European cheek kiss? No? Okay. Uh, can you tell me more about these tattoos? Of course. Excuse my hesitation before. She reaches over the guard wire and takes the photo, holds it in her elegant hand, stately nails protruding towards the heavens. For half a minute, in silence, she wears fingerless gloves. Her fingernails are cut short and fractured, like those of a working woman. Still stately, though. It was taken opinion. with a trigette not long ago. This is the man's upper body. There were no more markings on his hands or legs. Stay quiet and observe the woman's expression. This seems much more important than going, Hey, what do you think? You've had two seconds. Observe. Her mouth is relaxed. The accordion lines near her mouth vanish. The pearls of her eyes move slowly on the photo's surface. She has no excess of emotions for this cadaver. Has she seen dead bodies before? It's likely. Hmm. No stranger to death, our Joyce. So, what do you think? Uh, sorry. I was trying to see if I can read the web of interdependencies between these points. The stars. She points to one on the photo I paper. can't. But that's how you read this story. The points themselves don't have letters, numbers, anything. Their size, location on the body, and distance from each other tells you what they represent. Please continue. What cities? On the oceans? This is an Oranese map of the waterways, a sailor's tattoo worn by wayfarers of the DeLorean century. As early as 300 years ago, the sailors would mark their bodies to map their travels. And what travels did the dead man Quite make? Quite a few. Vredefort, the Oranese capital, traditionally stands on the right shoulder. He started somewhere near here, I think. What next? Then he made his way to the Preto Grangi, through what I think must be the Stutz Canal, an artificial channel through the Occident. From the Preto, he sailed to the Insulindic Ocean, first the Semenese Islands, then this. She points to his heart. Revachol. Those are the two constants. Vredefort on the shoulder, and Revachol in the heart. They started the tradition of these maps right after the discovery of Insulinde, at the dawn of the inter age. The old, old world passing by, and the new, new world already here. You said you can't read it. I can't. This man was no sailor. And these are no ports. I can understand geographic fragments, but not their meaning. Hmm. So what is the purpose of this map? The sailor's soul would use it to fly back home if they should die abroad. This is a sort of contraption to be reeled back in by. The silver cord, they would call it. Where is he now? As in, where is his soul now? Well, I've spoken to him, and the soul is fastened inside his corpse. This one has flown quite far by now. Nowhere there is no soul. 
Uh, this one's going nowhere but the morgue. I guess this strikes me as the most interesting. I've spoken to his soul, and it's still in there. Probably in agony, I guess. That is precisely what the sailors feared when they drew these maps. A fear of drowning within one's own corpse. There's so many fluids in there. Uh, who could tell me His more? The two members? The other contractors. Though I do not suggest you go and show them that picture. This man was their friend and comrade. Hey, I took a picture of your bloated dead friend. Look at it. Look at it close and tell me things. Yeah, probably wise choice. It Maybe. could go this or the other way. Maybe if you're tactful, it could be beneficial. Win, Empathy. Have I ever been tactful? You answer me Surely that. there are other people to ask about the tattoo. This is not necessary to complete the task, officer. It's a dangerous side task. Search elsewhere. I mean, we can definitely search elsewhere, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mark down the task. I need this information. Do what you have to do, Detective Dubois. I don't think deciphering that tattoo should come before public security. But if you should wade into the mob to find out, I couldn't stop you. We will be careful, then. That's all for the tattoos. Thank you Is for your help. Is there anything else I can help you with? We are half hour away from our Martin Martinez meetup. I don't think there's anything new we can ask Joyce about. We know what she thinks happened with the body. Um, we did not tell her too much about Everard, outside of the borscht gossip. I don't know if there's a better way we could have handled that, but eh, we've handled it. Thank you, Joyce. I will leave you in peace to sip your beverage. Is there, can I ask, steam coming out of your boat? Do you, do you have a, can I ask, hot tub below decks? That's not a euphemism. I'm being very literal. Do you have a hot tub below decks? Thank you, that's all for now. The Jamrock Shuffle. In a way, yes, Aww. you are treasure hunting. Most officers from Precinct 41 do what is called the Jamrock Shuffle, cracking open containers. Most of them are from Jamrock or Coal City, the poorest parts of Revachol, that also overlap with the network of royal catacombs called Le Royale, just beneath the streets. As children, you would all go underground hoping to find treasure and come back with a rat's tail or a used needle. That playful curiosity must still be in you. Who knows, maybe one day the Orb de Montagne, the Holy Scepter, and the Cocaine Skull will all be yours. There's a... There's a Cocaine Skull? Oh. Oh man, I've got to find these things. Please let me into Le Royaume. Alright, what does this give me? Find better loot in locked containers. Quick reset. All right. From here on out, we find better loot and potentially annoy um, Lieutenant Kim even more than we already have. I have so many skill points, like an, uh, an unnecessary amount of skill points. I should probably spend, let's say, three of them right now. <sighs> Things we know we need. Physical instrument, probably. Um, maybe composure? We could do with a little extra savoir-faire, if I'm being honest. And I would like to bump empathy up to eight. That's four skill points. Done. We still have a couple saved away for emergencies. Alright, so we only have half an hour. That's like one conversation's worth if there's a lot of dialogue to be had. Otherwise, I'm not exactly sure how to spend such time. We don't have any more damaged ledger cases to review. 
That would kind of be perfect, as those take exactly half an hour. We, we could purchase uh, a thirsty barbarian comic book from the bookstore and read that for half an hour, I guess. But now that I know the gentleman in the basement with his racist mug collection is a big fan of the thirsty barbarian, I'm less inclined to get into the series. What's this? It's the catacombs! I found the cocaine skull! I, I, I've got to know if those things they mentioned are actually real, or if they're just teasing me. Is there a holy scepter? I will possess it. I will jamrock shuffle my ass across this entire world until I possess the holy scepter. Yeah, ah. Alright, I know there was a skill check down here. Let's see if we need to use another one of our emergency points. You keep coming to back. Gray it. That's good, officer. It was composure. Keep right. those clothes, keep saving that economy. I really want to buy these itchy pants, but no. No, we'll wait. Okay, 58%. Fingers crossed. Something cold grazes your hand. Synthetic and sleek. A windbreaker. Surf, it says, but also wind. Summer. 100% waterproof. And sport. All in different typefaces. Good choice, officer. Mega sporty. And it's only 450 for you, sir. Increases my composure to the detriment of my shivers. 450. Good to have the option. I'm sure we will need additional composure when the time comes. The speakers below are banged up and worthless. The sneakers triumph over them. They're the star of the show here. These really do seem... Uh... Important for, like, if there's a more action-y scene later that requires reaction speed and hand-eye coordination. Plus, don't I have the gloves now that go with this series? So I could be an absolute hero if I was to buy these sneakers, but they're very expensive. Almost unconscionably so. Alright, we have the option for a windbreaker. I'll take over. Thanks. I'll just, I'll just jog lightly. Here we are. Scribbled between the thighs of a page three girl. La Origine de Disco. Disco originates between the thighs? I, gu I guess is the message. Hmm. An inspectable tree. Tell me your secrets, tree. Also, yes. Lieutenant Kim, I guess. Sure. Sorry, Kim. <laughs> I misclicked. The hawthorn tree on Rue de Songe's lane. Bronze-colored ribbons of magnetic tape are caught in its branches, fluttering in the breeze. Mm. Magnetic tape, you say? Oh, that's a that's a good hawthorn. Patting and the pat. tree reveals a small sticker which has almost been worn to oblivion. It reads. RCM Emergencies Desk, number 8102, underneath a slogan, Mankind, Be Vigilant. The gnarled hawthorn tree on Rue de Songe's Lane, a wintry breeze blows by, making the magnetic tape flutter. The multi-tool is truly multi. Should I then... Nope. Uh... What's the word? Equip. There we are. The word is equip. The multi-tool? Will that increase my chances? The gnarled hawthorn tree on Rue de Songe's lane. Nope. A wintry breeze blows by. Didn't increase my chances in the slightest. We'll give it three tries. The gnarled hawthorn tree on Rue de Songe's like an immaculate labyrinth. Why, that's one. The 
gnarled hawthorn tree on Rue the Sock like an immaculate la There's two. The gnarled hawthorn there tree the charm. on Rue the Songe's leg like an immaculate labyrinth. No, the magnetic it's not. tape twists and turns around the branches. All right. Come back when we have more interfacing. In fact, let's check the inventory for interfacing. Mm -hmm. First, am I limiting it in any way? Ah, my gardening gloves are helping me out. Thank you. Doesn't look like it, so anything I can add to the gloves. Nope. Not a thing I can add to the gloves. Alright, three more tries then. <laughs> because I need this magnetic tape. Keep going, yes. An old hawthorn tree will. on Rue de Songe's Lane. A wintry breeze like an immaculate. Look at there. We've made worse percentage checks before. The Lord Hawthorne tree on Rue de Songe's Lane, like an immaculate. La this is so cheap of me. The Lord Hawthorne tree I hope on you're Rue all de Songe's as Lane, in me as I a am. wintry with slow and deliberate motions, Yay! pulling, bending, and unraveling. You managed to extricate the magnetic tape from the branches. It Continue. curls up into a mess inside your pocket. If only you could find a way to re-spool it so that you could hear what's on the tape. I need to hear what's on this tape. I know we found like the sad, the sad song. I, in, the, in the tickle of my brain, I feel like we found an empty reel at one point, but do not have Maybe it now. Maybe Roy from the pawn shop can help you with this. What's the tape for? You'll see. It's for Egghead. I promised to make his Van Van Eyck's jam hit a bit harder, and maybe this tape can help. No, I'm too embarrassed to say. <laughs> we can be honest with the lieutenant. It's for oh, Egghead. It's broken and unspooled. Do you think your new buddy knows how to fix it? I think at least one of the ravers would know how to fix a broken tape if they want to set up a nightclub. Probably a cell, let's be honest. I'm not sure, but I'll find out. Maybe Egghead can point me in the right direction. You could direction. also get it fixed at the pawn shop across the street. We shouldn't waste our time. Why would you be mean to the tree? There's no reason to be mean to the tree. That's Patting a good the hawthorn. Tree. The gnarled hawthorn tree. Alright, uh, we're right next to the pawn shop. Let's go. Still trying to kill a couple minutes. Bearing with me. And my cheesy tactics. Hey, Roy. I'm back, and I'm not shining a flashlight in your eyes. You'll be pleased to know. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Uh, hey, do you know how to fix you this? You mean raise poly? Yeah, I do, but... Great! Could you do it, please? This is important. I need to be able to play this tape for but some. But I'm not some Mr. Fix-It. I'm a pawnbroker. If you want to pawn the tape, sure. Although it looks pretty... worthless. Mmm, the hesitancy in your voice before you said worthless makes me feel as though you're not just speaking about the just tape. Just explain why you need this so much. He's bound to understand. Uh, but you tinker with film tapes all the time. Isn't this the same? I'm just helping you out in your hobbies. Worthless? It's not worthless, Roy. This could be the next big thing for the musical dance music scene. The local one, even. I got excited. Hmm. Maybe you can help me in wink wink some other way, then. Arrrr. Uh, this could be the next big thing for the local dance music scene, but frankly, we don't even know if it's music. It could be like a newsreel. But sure, I'll lie to <gasps> Roy. What do you mean? Do you know that old church yes. down the coast? What about it? Well, 
I met some young ravers, delinquents, if you will, near the place. They want to turn the church into a nightclub oomch, 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 and play some weird neo-disco beats there. I think I danced so hard it started popping. But it stopped now. Um, they call it anodic dance music. I promise to help them. Is it any that. good? The music, I mean. No. See, that's the thing. You can't believe how unbelievably thin the beat is. There's nothing to it. No bass. It just goes zoot, zoot, zoot. But this tape could make it hardcore. It's not very. I, I, I need to funk it up, if you will. I've got, I've got, to, I've got to say hardcore. Man, you're really invested in this. It's true. He looks at the bundle of tape in front of him. It shimmers under the shop's dazzling light okay, show. Okay, I'll help you out. It's going to take a moment, though. So just sit back and relax. I hope it takes less than 20 minutes, if I'm being honest with you. I don't mean to rush you at all, and I know I'm asking a lot already, but could you do it in less than 20 minutes? You take some time to look around the store. The play of visuals all around the pawn shop is mesmerizing. Suddenly, Roy turns back to you with a reel of tape in his hand and coughs. Ah, uh, wait. This took more than just a few minutes. That was at least 15 minutes? No, thank you for the help. I, that, was, that was exactly what I wanted. You've surpassed my every expectation, and if there's anything, ever, anything, wink, wink, I can do for you, Roy, you know where to find yeah, me. Yeah, my pleasure. I'll do what I can for true passion projects. Just try not to use this tape for negative photon emissions. Take responsibility. Okay. I'm, I'm genuinely not sure how I, I would prevent that or cause it. Um, but I'll, I'll try. I'll try not to emit any negative photons. Uh, thank you. I love you, Roy. If there wasn't glass here, I would kiss you on the lips. Have a nice night. Lieutenant Kim? There's no glass in front of you. Get over here. Get over here. Oh, no. Don't run away from me. Don't you run away from me, Lieutenant Kim. Bring me those puffy little lips. I'm sorry. This is harassment. You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the oh, table. Yeah. Some on horseback. I forgot about this others one. Others in rags. Others yet in bright blue uniform. Step away from the table for a quick save. Let's try it. You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the everything you pick out. Aww. My pride. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. You see pride. rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the Why? What's this? Yay! A headless man riding a horse. A headless man wearing futuristic tracksuit trousers that say foul. Hmm. Uh, what is this? Oh. That's the headless phone rider. Oh, of course. I I know all about the legends. Uh, who the? The headless phone rider. It's an urban legend about a man who rides the streets of Revachol sporting a phone tracksuit. As you see, he's missing his head. I mean, can you imagine how much improved the legend of Sleepy Hollow would be if he was wearing a sick tracksuit? Fifty cents. Bargain priced. I'll throw in the tiny cap, too. I think he's looking for it, or something. That part of the story has many interpretations. Aren't all of us at the very core of our being just searching, searching for a tiny he cap? He lost his cap when he lost his head. Perhaps he's looking for the head. It does sound more likely than the tiny cap. Uh, 50 cents? Yeah, I'll, I'll take the headless fallen rider. Did I mention that this figurine is supposed to be lucky? Always carry it with you. He grins. The urge to kiss him grows stronger. That was a very smooth salesman's grin that almost comes off as earnest. You should learn from him. Yeah, almost. All right, thanks. I expect this. In my inventory. 
A reel of magnetic tape, bronze-colored tape found in the branches of a hawthorn tree, Pat Pat, has been reconstructed into a usable reel of magnetic tape. It's pretty fragile and in an odd format which doesn't fit into any portable tape players. Nevertheless, Egghead will be stoked! The plastic headless fallen rider sits atop his equally plastic bull sh I would uh, bull, his posture indicating either desperation or pride. It comes as a set with the infamous fallen cap for which he lost his head. The head is not included. I don't know what I'm going to do with this, and it, it has a depreciated by eight cents in value since I've taken it out of the case, I guess. But, uh, it's still an absolute steal. And I'm privileged to own such a piece of history. Slash product placement. Okay, we've got five minutes to get to Martin Martinez's house. Let us scurry thence. I'm really hoping it's not just like a one-time thing. Because the night we were supposed to go to Martin Martinez's house... I told Kim to take the body back to the precinct, and we could not proceed. And I was too scared to do it alone. I, I love the multi-tool. Thank you, multi-tool. You've, you've helped my life in so many ways. It's so big and clunky, I can't stand walking around with it. Alright, so I think I can go in either way, either like the, yeah, the actual apartment entrance, or I can go in the backyard. Doesn't seem to matter. They both lead to the same place. Wasn't there like a backyard wall interface? What is that? Oh, it's probably just the hatch where I go down into the shop. Yeah, okay. So I don't remember where the backyard wall interface is. Maybe it's inside that part. Or maybe this... This counts as the backyard wall? Perhaps. But I know we have a skill check there. Into the tenements. And... Balcony? Yeah! Alright, so I still, need, I still need to... spend five minutes, somehow, doing something. The curtains shift just a little. Someone is watching from within. Let's try our luck. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. No one answers. We should return in the evening. At 9 p.m., the earliest. Sure. No, I understand. All right, five minutes... Just need to, like, talk to someone with any new dialogue. I'm not sure if it's possible to just, like, repeat dialogue and time will still pass. That may be the case. Hmm. Someone's left new boots out here. Someone's been goofing. Revolutionaries love to pose with their guns. A plaster cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads Kras Mazov. Well, here's another chance to prove my devotion to communism. <sighs> Father Mazov, the hero of the working class. Also, also a mass murder. It's it's just like two million or so, folks. It's not, it's not a big deal. It's just two million or so, folks. All right, the realtor is still in there. It seems. Give me a moment. Oh yeah, I never did return to her. 
After speaking with the realtor, please take exactly four minutes for this conversation. I didn't find any counterculture people in apartment number 10. It was just a real estate agent. A counterculturalist real estate agent setting up the room for new tenants. I see. I hope some good people are finally going to move in. This place needs them. Why did you look directly at me when you said that? That hurt my feelings. She takes out her handkerchief and wipes her nose. Yes, radio computer wizards are coming. They're gonna save the place and the economy. No one is coming. There will be nothing but squalor unless we start killing real estate agents. <laughs> ah, lax women and sexual deviants. That's who will come. I'm sure everything will be fine. This apartment building just needs slow, imperceptibly slow change. That's what it needs. <laughs> Thanks, moralism. Um, I don't, I don't know for sure that any radio computer wizards are coming, and I don't want to get her hopes up. I, I don't, I also don't know that lax women are coming, and I don't want to get her hopes up. I know how excited she is about the lax women. I'm not going to depress her with this. So I'm sure everything will be fine. Would be a nice thing to say, but the imperceptibly slow change, I know, is just talking about social democracy. And I d <sighs> I'm going to go radio computer wizards. Is any dialogue option that has wizards in it is cool with oh, me. I do like wizards, and people like yeah. that in general. They have a lot to tell us about our fates. She means clairvoyance. Yeah, that's that's who's moving in. Ton of clairvoyance. I can feel it. I can feel it in the uh, lines of my palm. I guess. Could you could you maybe spoon me for three minutes? I just need three minutes of spooning, if that's Ask okay. Ask away, policeman. Why is there a hole? I don't know if I want to know the answer to this, but why is there a hole in the wall in the abandoned apartment? Some lunatic lost his mind. All kinds of morons pass through these halls. With how small these rooms are, wouldn't you want to break the wall down? Hmm. Just ask my hostel room. Who lives behind the padlocked door? Oh, that one is a scientist. A future scholar. Suddenly, the old lady's face is beaming. It's hot! Ah! I think he studies astrology at the community college. Education's good. I always tell them to study. Astrology, Something is, eh? Something to do with all those stars around his door. He asked me to leave his drawings up on the wall. Um... You mean the Star and Antlers? Why, that's the symbol of glorious communism. The symbol of what now? Communism, you know, like in the World Revolution. You know, the ones who support the working class against capital. It's an ideology. It has some noble aims, but it's also been used to justify terrible, but not a big deal, terrible, terrible bloodshed. It's for loons who have no idea how the economy works. It's a symbol for contributing to the demise of our noble state in the name of some made-up world of equality. Communism. It's a political ideology. Again, here's my chance to impress Daddy Kraz. Um, you know, the ones who support the working class against capital. Huh. I thought Revachol was the capital. 2100 hours exactly. My god, cleaning lady, you've been spooning me perfectly. That's she all thanks. Some kind of a response. Then hacks something into her handkerchief. Gross. All right, I'm off. Thank you. There's nothing gross about the cleaning lady. Apparently the real estate agent leaves at a hard 9 every evening. Not 9.01, not 9 and 30 seconds. Onto the balcony. We quick save it again, in case I get shot. And somebody is lounging about in their loungewear. 
No doubt their nips quite perky from the cold. It's Martin Martinez. John Dummerie, you found me. The young man on the balcony gives you a bright smile before taking another drag from his cigarette. His slender figure is backlit by city lights, its distant streets and motorways flashing like diamonds. Should we switch positions? Uh, I'd like to see the city lights behind you if it's not too much trouble. We, we need to switch positions for that. It feels like a Friday. He seems to be in a good mood tonight. We got your hint. Found the key right under that stone. You are now officially involved. Beautiful. He replies, smiling. As he looks at you, something sparkles in his eyes. Why, that's the welcoming glint of... Um... What's the word? Lust. I'd recognize it anywhere. So tell me, are you here to make things right again? What is wrong. What's wrong? That is what I'm aiming for. Honestly, I'm just trying not to screw anything up. I'm not going to make things just right. I'm going to make them spectacular. Ignore his question. I was hoping to talk to a possible witness. Your balcony overlooks the murder scene. Um, I, I am aiming to make things right, but do you mean with the corpse, or are you having, like, boy troubles? Either way, I'm here for you, buddy. I'm not going to make them right. I'm going to make them spectacular. Let's not over-promise. That's what I'm Beautiful. aiming for. A nearby street lamp casts shadows on his chin, drawing out the slender cheekbones, and you thought he couldn't get any more gorgeous. I have some good news for you. My Sunday friend is visiting me tonight. I told him about you, and he'd like to say hello. Step in. He's already waiting. Is your Sunday friend going to shoot me in the face? And not in the fun way, but, like, I'm, I'm a little bit worried for my safety, and... By the way, I'm really digging the view here. Point to the city skyline. Is it Friday tonight? It feels like Friday tonight. <laughs> Isn't it Wednesday tonight? It sounds like a popular pop song. Wednesday tonight! Why would I want to meet your friend? Uh, very well. I'll talk to him. But first, I want to talk to you. I have so many questions about your cheekbones. I'm really digging the view here. Mm-hmm. That's why I chose this place. Martinez is special, isn't it? He looks away, his cigarette end glowing in the dark. And that's not his only end that's glowing in the... Sorry. Wait. Suddenly you're digging things? Yeah, I'm digging things, Lieutenant. Don't don't harsh my vibes. Is it Friday tonight? It feels like Friday tonight. It does tonight. feel like the end of the week. It's so magical. The white falling against the black. All right, I'll talk to your friend. That's nice, but I don't have anything to tell you. It's my friend you're looking for, not me. He takes another drag of his unfiltered cigarette and looks around. It's getting dark, and the neighboring windows have lit up one by one. Downstairs, a cat crosses the yard, disappearing into the bush. Besides, I've got to run. You've got to run? You're just going to leave me alone with your Sunday friend, quote-unquote? What if he shoots me in the face? I need witnesses. He's going to leave you alone again. That's sad. It is sad. I miss him. I just found you again, you and your slender cheekbones. Go, if you must. I care not. I don't care about people leaving me all the time. <laughs> God. It's fine. Uh, where are you going? To the city. It's a beautiful night. All right, only if you promise that we'll talk again later. <laughs> Oh, hello. You've not caught a Peter stream in a long while. What a interesting time for you to come in. This seems fun. <laughs> it is indeed. It's so nice to see you again. Welcome back. All right, go then. Go then and leave me. Christine! Christine! 
I do want to talk to you later. It's very Something important. Something flutters in the corner of the lieutenant's mouth as you're saying those words. Is it jealousy? Because I'm about to bag this young hottie? At my age, Kim, I can smell the jealousy on It's you. laughter. Oh, <laughs> That makes a lot more sense, actually, yeah. We'll talk. Just not tonight. The smoker assures you, brushing his hand through his gorgeous hair. All right, I'll see Take you care, next time. All right. Interview the Sunday friend. Oh, too far. He flashes you a disarming smile before slipping off into the night. You love to watch him and go. He's gone again. Looks like it's becoming a theme for him. He's always leaving. Why is he always leaving, Kim? Is it me? Is there something about me? There's something so different about him that I just can't put my finger on. All right, let's go. We have to interview his Sunday friend. Why is he always leaving, Who Kim? detective? It's a mystery. Is it? You seem to know exactly what's going on, and it's causing you much amusement. There. He's laughing again. There's something different about him. I'd love to put my fingers on different, it. Different, of course. Why is his shirt always unbuttoned? It's it's great for me. But why? He's such a good listener. I liked talking to him. There's something so mysterious about the way he talks and moves. And he smells good. Why on earth does he smell so good? <laughs> Oh, this is cute. I'm going to go shirt. Why is his shirt always unbuttoned, Lieutenant Kim? His shirt. Yes, his, his shirt. shirt. Why is it always He's unbuttoned? He's trying to dive deep into the mysteries of his shirt. His shirt? No, I don't know why his shirt is always unbuttoned. Why is his happy trail so well-groomed, Kim? I have follow-up questions. Come on, detective. Let's go. We've got a potential witness to interview. His Sunday friend, remember? He nods at the apartment door before you. We're, we're going to talk about this later, Kim. Don't you worry. We're going to talk more about his happy trail later. Oh, hey, Sunday friend. I'm going to quickly loot the apartment. I'll be with you. I'll be with you shortly. A quarterly business magazine. An empty ashtray. Dishes soaked up in a pot. Flyers for underground parties. Oomch, 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 hardcore! Dates for open lectures at a local university. Dates don't go bad before we get to the lectures. There's something under under the bed. It's a a, a hat. Samaran conical hat. I've stolen it. An exquisite canopy bed made of metal. Mm, I like the way it squeaks. An old photo of the same apartment, dated year zero one. Expensive men's perfume lingers in the air, answering the question of why he smells so good. Because it's expensive. Party dragon's silk robe. Buckets of paint on a layer of old newspapers. Alright, we've looted. Now it's time for your Sunday friend. Officers of the Revachol Citizens Militia. The man in business casual removes his cufflinks. Whoa! Don't you want me to pay you first? You shouldn't be seeing him in an intimate setting. For some reason, you feel this man is your superior. It's the way that he's dressed, and his general air of competency that gives that superior, impression. Superior, but he's not in the command chain. Is he in the food chain? My name is Charles Vildroin. And I'm an official with the coalition government. 
I work for the Institute of Price Stability on assignment from Sur Lately. I heard you talking to my friend outside. Very good. Super. I am here to assist you in any way possible. Ask me about the hanging. You've gone warbly, my friend. I'm going to call you Warbles from now on. My Sunday friend Warbles, pleased to meet you. Uh, please continue. No, first ask an innocuous personal question to get the interview off on the right foot. <laughs> Is that a subtle jab at my interrogation style suggestion? Yes. Make it clear you're the one setting the terms here. Before we go on, I absolutely have to inquire about this wonderful metal canopy bed. Show him the silk robe. Before we get to that, tell me where you got this beautiful silk robe from. Show him the hat. We'll get to that right after you tell me the story behind the black Samaran hat. Well, hello, mister. Let's get started. This seems very forward. I don't... Especially when combined with me pointing to the bed. Uh, I'd love to know about your uh, canopy bed to not show you the things I've stolen from your apartment. Oh, yes. My friend has a great eye for these things. He refuses to tell me where it came from. It's a mystery. <laughs> I believe they call this type of frame industrial. It's very comfy. Mm. Mind if I test it out? Hold my That's cloak. That's really all I can tell you about it. He forms a little rooftop with his fingers. It's cute. Cold air sweeps in from that the balcony. That didn't work at all. The lieutenant takes out his notebook and nods to you to proceed. All right, so... Um, can you tell me about your friend? Ah, my friend. My friend is a good young man. His family immigrated here from Kedra, and life has not been easy for him. But he understands the importance of education. He has taken his future into his own hands, and that's all that matters. Something's not adding up here. Life has not been easy for him, but he's gorgeous. You'd think he'd just be strolling into places, getting free lattes and stuff. Sounds very easy to have cheekbones like that. Uh, what's Kedra? Kedra is a candidate member of APIS. But, between you and me, their potential membership is a more contentious issue. That is never going to happen. They enter negotiations in 21, and it's been pending ever since. What is this EPIS thing you keep talking EPIS about? EPIS is a very special program developed by the Moral Intern to support certain Occidental nations. It began as a unified system of weights and measures, which proved to be a wild success. Nothing but kilograms and centimeters as far as the eye can see. <laughs> Finally. Go, yes, sweet standardization. The backbone of rationality and commerce. High five me, logic. It was such a wild success that we expanded it into an economic union for the processing of steel. Another success. And between you and me, the moral intern feels emboldened by this success. Emboldened to take EPIS to the next level. Okay, but like, what, what does it stand for? Eels... Perforating, um, I igloo sleeves? Why, it stands for progress and stability, like the moral intern as a whole. <laughs> oh, you got me. No, but like, what do the letters stand for? It's been such a wild, extraordinary success thus far. We are very excited to take it to the next level. You don't even hear the words I'm saying, a do you? A supranational political alliance. The United States of Occident. Is it going to be like this place You mean here? Revachon? No. It's going to have transparent democracy. But is Revachon going to be a part of it? It's EPIS? one day going to be a candidate member of EPIS, sure. I can't wait to kilometer my way through the day when that, Except that day that comes. candidate members never become full members, do they? Wait a minute, didn't you say that candidate members never become real full no, members? No, candidate members do become members. Why do we even have the whole system in place if they don't? It just takes time. Time 
and the valuation. How much but time? But we were talking about my friend here, not politics. Mm, seems we're talking about both. How did you two become friends? Um, friends? Is that is that the word for How it? How did any of us become friends? Bad things happening on the insulin Isola? Oil platforms ablaze in the night? Civil wars lasting for years? Finally, the international community is forced to step in. No one becomes friends by forcing the international community to step in. It's how millions of people end up where they are. Meeting the people they meet. It's how I came here. And my friend, too. But, uh, who, who is he? This Martin Martinez, in, in your Sorry. estimation. Who? <laughs> he throws a quick glance at his watch. Your friend, the smoker on the balcony we were just talking about. But I about. told you, officer. He's a bright young man here to pursue his education. Education is the foundation of our future, especially the arts. It is a cornerstone of our civilization. So all you can tell me about him is that he's here to study the arts? He's deeply arts. enmeshed in the study of the fine arts, yes. Which He's a arts? truly free spirit. He likes all the arts. Perhaps graphic design, printmaking, who knows? The world is open wide for a talented youth like him. So what are you doing in his apartment by yourself, lounging in his silk robes? I'm just enjoying the view. The man smiles nodding to the window. Uh, isn't it rude for your friend to leave you alone like this? We're old friends. Nothing's taboo between us. He comes and goes. I'm sure you'll see him around. He's very active. Mm, he looks like it. Very spry. I had something else in mind. Back to the canopy bed. You, me, Big Spoon. I'm all ears, officer. So you actually witnessed I'm the I'm sorry lynching? to say I did. Officer. I'm sorry to hear that. Would you like counseling? Kim, give him one of the cards. Uh, this is just the break we've been looking for. Let's not get too excited. Is it because you did it? <laughs> Start from the beginning, if you don't mind. Officer, it's very difficult to describe what I saw that night. It was so surreal to me, like in a play. He holds out his hands and blossoms his fingers, like a drama teacher set in the scene. What do you mean, like in a play? It was just so strange. I could barely comprehend what was happening. I was on the balcony when it happened, getting some fresh air. I remember that first they came in, carrying what looked like a body. And then I saw all the surrounding windows go dead, one by one. That's when I understood. I should not be seeing this. Sounds like the victim was unconscious, or at least incapacitated. Interesting. So who were they? Can you describe them? I couldn't see their faces well, and there were quite a few of them. But they were very loud and very... Martinez. He pauses, looking for the right word. Let's just say that the laboring classes can get rather expressive with their profanities. Ah, so Kuno did it. Solved the case. Uh, how many of them were there? I couldn't tell you exactly. Less than ten. Maybe eight? The lieutenant sends you a sharp look at the mention of that number. Were any of them, um... A Angusy? Like 200 kilograms, kind of Angusy. That's a giant you're describing. No, they were all quite human, as far as I could tell. Did any of them look like drummers? Drummers? Why, no. But then, I don't know what a drummer is supposed to look like. Oh, come on. You know exactly what a drummer is supposed to look like. Picture it in your mind. That's the I guy. I think we can drop the drummer angle. That was my bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes me so happy. Kim is always very politely, very sweetly, um, ribbing me about my detective style. And to get just a, just a touch, just a little, little splinter of vengeance was a good time. So what happened next? Oh, you're off to the grocery store for potato soup makings. Mm. I'll be there soon. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope it goes well. What happened next? I went back inside. Were you able to see anything from inside? Officer, the yard was pitch black. 
There was nothing to see. But I could still hear their voices. They were threatening to kill Were there... Everyone. Sorry, I interrupted you. Were there any, um, lady voices amidst the All din men, I presume. of... But again, I couldn't see very clearly. ethnicity were they? Seems like a strange question to ask, but sure. I believe they were mostly white, though I believe I saw two Aeropagites among them. And I am quite certain that one spoke with a mask accent. And what happened next? Well, that's the strangest part, officer. Nothing happened. It was oddly quiet for a public lynching. What do you mean, nothing Eventually, happened? their shouts died down, and that was all. There were no gunshots, no celebratory shouts. No anything. Mm. That does seem strange. Almost as if he had been shot in the face prior to the I'm lynching. I'm afraid I don't have anything else to add. About what time was all this happening, approximately? All I can say is that it was late. You didn't check your watch. I'm scolding him now for his... Um... Incompetencies. Yes, now I remember. It was 30 minutes past midnight, give or take. That was quick. Quick sort of heel turn you just did there. Uh, let me get this straight. You didn't actually witness the hanging itself, nope, did I you? I didn't see the corpse until the following day. All right. Thank you for of your time. Anything I can do to assist the RCA. So what is an official like you doing in Martinez, smelling up the place gloriously with your expensive clothes? The coalition is only looking out for the price stability. Inflation is a killer, like a heart disease blocking the normal circulation of the economy. It must be controlled. The price stability. The economy impacts the entire international community, which is why it requires international oversight. All right. You're some kind of bureaucrat. What is this international community? What is the price stability? Enough business. What are you doing here, in this apartment, specifically? Be as graphic with your response as possible. I'm sort of sickly interested in a voyeuristic sense. Go uh, on. Well, I'm renovating it. It is an interesting project. The building used to be a 12-story skyscraper before the cannons took the top four stories off. This, of course, happened when the Coalition forces landed here. You could say I'm undoing some of the material damage the international community caused when we arrived here. What is this international La community? La Communauté Internationale is what Rivacholians colloquially call the Coalition. In other words, the nations that stopped the disaster of the revolution. And what do I call the Coalition? Your employer. Technically speaking, the governing authority of Rivachol. The RCM is but one part of this provisional administration. So you're some kind of yes. bureaucrat? As I said before, I am a commissioner from Sur La Clé working for the Institute of Price Stability. This is one of the main projects of the Moral Inter. Wait, there isn't actually an Institute of Price Stability, is there? Or maybe there is. God, it's impossible to understand whether someone from the mall intern is joking or not. Ah, uh, what is the price it stability? It is the most important thing. Ah, that clears everything up. I'm being sarcastic. That doesn't it's tell me It's the central goal of any sound monetary policy. Maintaining the price stability is essential to maintaining high levels of economic activity which is essential for maintaining high levels of employment, which is essential for maintaining the social stability. Basically, it makes sure the price of bread doesn't change. It's all about Price's that bread. Too much inflation, bread becomes too expensive. Too much deflation, it becomes too cheap for bakers to produce. That's why the Institute of Price Stability works to keep inflation just below 2%. Below 2% of Not what? Not too far below, no. Two below is also bad. Below, but close to 2%. You're not answering my question. The coalition again. believes in the importance of informing the public about the benefits of the price stability. Transparency is one of our principles. Would you like an informational pamphlet? 
Oh boy, would I? Give me that a leaflet. A sound monetary policy is essential for addressing uncertainty. Stability is the raison d'être of the moral inter. It's the reason why I identify as a moralist. But oh, I don't have my leaflets on me today. That's too bad. Oh, come on. You can always call our information line. Making information available is part of the moral intern's commitment to transparency. You leaflet teased me. So I've heard about this moral intern before, but I want it's to know more. It's the international more. organization for moralists. Hence, Moralist International. The Institute of Price Stability is just one of its many mind babies, as is the coalition. Mind babies, you say? Ooh, turn to Kim. So we're actually working for the Moral Lantern? That doesn't seem so bad. So what I'm hearing is that we are um, under the thumb of the Moral Lantern. I don't mean to ruffle Kim's feathers. I'll, I'll be generous. There are more nefarious powers to work for than the Moral Lantern. Turn back to the Sunday friend. Are you a moralist? Not of course. Am I a moralist? <laughs> How would he know? Why are because you Because moralists believe in a normal, stable world governed by democratic values. And if some people suffer their entire lives while the world is quote-unquote stable, so be it. Um, are you a moralist, Lieutenant Kim? I don't know if I've had the opportunity to just flat out ask him. Mm. Me? I, uh... He's such a moralist, he doesn't even want to answer I'm a lieutenant question. of the RCM, dedicated to maintaining yeah. law and order in Ravachon. You know, you answered the question. A very That's moralist my... answer. <laughs> the lieutenant has practiced in the art of putting on a show for one's superiors. Martinez doesn't seem very normal or very stable to me. What is a normal, stable world, the anyway? The Occident is part of the normal world. Oranier, sur la clé... Martinez doesn't seem like those places you Martinez? mentioned. Martinez? No. Martinez is... something else. And what about the rest of Revachol? Is it part of the normal world you describe? Revachol is generally difficult. It's led by an interim government, which means it hasn't yet achieved full democracy. But they are working towards it. You're all doing very well here, relatively speaking. He gives you an approving nod, which makes you feel a little bit like a golden retriever. I don't think I'm a moralist. Moralism sounds incredibly boring, and I want more action. Moralism is the ideology of foreign occupiers. Revishol must be governed by Revisholians. Democracy is a meaningless sham, as long as the working class is under the boot heel of capital. It's like every time I'm talking to people, I'm choosing option D. <laughs> None of the above. Is that moralism? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. All right. Democracy is a meaningless sham as long as the working class is under the boot heel of capital. It's like I would be a lot more willing <laughs> to lay out my in-game political ideology. I would be a lot more willing to pick these sorts of dialogue options, to stand up for the working class. If it didn't feel as though the, like, ruling power of the working class in the Union wasn't so mob-esque... And the whole thing just has a sort of, um, replacement to capitalism feel? If the shit still flows downhill under your, your protective union, I'm wondering if it's better. But I am going to take a small stand here. Unless the working class is free from the boot heel of capital, democracy is a meaningless <clears throat> shame. Of course, the detective's personal views do not represent the views of the RCM. <laughs> of course. Ah, my friend. But the lesson of the revolution is that communism does not work. I just got an achievement for employing critical theory nine times. And it was called the biggest communism builder. 
Um, it didn't work, see, because the coalition crushed it violently. We just haven't tried real communism yet. And you're telling me this world here is working out well? These are all good, good points. You're telling me this world here is working out well? Well, as long as the price of bread doesn't get raised or lowered, I think he would say yes. So that's sort of meaningless to say. We just haven't tried real communism yet. Nah, it didn't work because the coalition crushed oh, it violently. Oh, yes. The big bad coalition crushed the revolution. Tell me, if the revolution was succeeding, would it have been crushed so easily? Are we really so bad for wanting compromise, peace, and prosperity on reasonable, achievable terms? Ask yourself that. All right, give me a minute. Hey, me. Are, are they really so bad for what? No, I'm not going to ask myself that. Thank you for now, the suggestion. Now, enough of this delightful political interlude. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? At least I stood up for capital. Er, nope. No. Ew. At least I stood up for communism. Enough to get an achievement. And isn't that, at the end of the day, what this is all really about? <laughs> Tell me about Sir Lacli. What's there to say? Turlacli is a modern, urbanized country that measures very high on the Human Development and Freedom Index. Mostly, though, it's known as the executive heart of EPIS. Moreover, it is a great sponsor of less emerged countries. Revachal is only one of its many darlings whose progress it supports and cherishes. Wow, I just got lost in your eyes and all I heard was darling and cherishes. So, what did you just say? Darling, that can't be an official designation. What makes Rivachol Sur Lacli's darling? Because a great percentage of Rivachol's culture hails from Sur Lacli. Its language, its people, its cuisine even. Or at least, in the downtown La Delta area. Jamrock and other parts of the international zone have been mercifully spared of Sur Lacli's love for meatballs and mashed potatoes. I mean, you're saying that like it's a bad thing, but I am i am very hungry for mashed potatoes. Um, what about Orange? Orange is an exemplary nation who, Orange. as a core member of EPIS, contributes 28% of our annual budget. Next to Sur La Clé, Orange is probably the most prominent member of the international community. Which one of them is more EPIS? Oh, but outside of EPIS, what is Orange? Orange's economy is one of the most advanced in the world. It has successfully transitioned from heavy industry to advanced services and generally acts as an engine for sustainable change in the international community. But that didn't tell you anything about Orange. Can't you just like, and, and I'm sorry for this, talk like a normal person? About what? About Orange. Just tell me what it's like there. Are there birds? Do you have pastries? Oh, it's very urban and very well organized. Their streets are clean, their horse cars run on time, the people are polite and efficient. Like I said, they are an example for less emerged nations to follow. All right, that's enough business. Now remove your slacks. Whatever you wish, officer. Oh, my. Well, oh, that's it. that's it. Thanks. I've got all I need, including your robe and hat, apparently, which I'm just, I'm going to take, I'm confiscating these as an officer of the law. A moment, officer. What do you do need, you my friend? you have everything you need from me? I'm afraid we won't have the chance to speak again once you leave. Wait, why can't we talk later? Are you leaving? Are you leaving town because you shot a man in the face? It's against diplomatic best practices for an official in my position to be discussing murders with local militiamen. And I'm pressed for time. After you leave, I should be leaving as well. That's not the real reason he's so apprehensive. Men in his position shouldn't be seen loitering around in underprivileged young men's apartments in the middle of the night. I'm not going anywhere. I just want to take a look around in this apartment. No, I, I, I think we're done. I think I've drained you of all relevant information regarding the price stability. Of course. I'm glad I could help. 
I'm glad you could help as well. Uh, are you a hugger? Bring it in. Bring it in, buddy. Alright. I feel desperately unloved and rejected. Good, good night. Good day to you. No hugs for Harry Dubois. That seems to be the screed of the day. Jingle jangle. Nothing there. Alright, so we finally had our 9 o'clock appointment. Thank goodness. Learned a lot about the world. Let's exit into the backyard. So, it's almost Betty by time for Lieutenant Kim. Um, we probably have 20 minutes or so left in our session time, if we're going to be traditionalists about it. What else can we do with the remainder of our evening? Just an ordinary war. Nothing to see here. I always forget that my chances of this are much better at night time. That dimming light bonus. This doesn't seem to be getting... Uh, more likely to happen? Like, it's not a timed thing, so I just probably need to soak some points into conceptualization. Or cheese it. Cheese it wildly. I'm gonna give it three tries. Just an ordinary war. The old Nothing to see rule here. of three. Because this is no ordinary war. Yes! It is sublime. Look at it. The shadows. The colors. Mmm. Let the conceptual joy flow into your pupils and blossom into thoughts in your brain all meat. All the other walls on all the other houses must make a pilgrimage in adoration of this, the uncontested pinnacle of Warcraft, color peeled from the very face of God. Ouch. More! Oh, Wallfather. <laughs> Wallfather. <laughs> ah... Kim, I must paint this wall. I must add even more beauty to it. No, there is nothing to add to perfection. I, d I do want to paint the wall. I huh? do. I mean, I know you're probably sleepy, but could you hold this ladder for He sounds tired of it all. <laughs> you fair. already have the heavy fuel oil to use as paint. It's red. And Cindy the Skull has a paintbrush. This is on. Alright, now I know you're tired, Kim, but take another look at this wall. Draw nourishment from its beauty. I already have the paint. I just need to get a paintbrush from Cindy the Skull. Mm, I'd like to tell him to draw nourishment. Mm -hmm. Sure. The lieutenant looks up at the wall reluctantly and then back at you. I already have the paint. I just need to go get a paintbrush. And we are in business. Now hold this ladder for me. I must. He's so sleepy. Poor man. Alright. Hey, Cindy the Skull, don't you go anywhere. Don't you go to bed. I need you. Now more than ever, Cindy. Hey. Hello get again, your officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Uh, yes, it's gorgeous. Now, about your, um, means to create art and potentially eat. Can I have what it? What for? I'm doing renovation. It's boring, but necessary. It's for my motor carriage. We are going undercover. The apocalypse is coming, and I need to warn people. It's for art. It's, it's for art. Well, okay? if it's for art... But what kind of art are we talking about? Well, everything is so sad and shit, and we need art to make it okay. Just give me the brush. <laughs> Grand art. Art deluxe. The artsiest... Artsiest. The most groundbreaking. And to be honest, I haven't really thought of anything yet, but I'm sure I will. Everything is sad and shit. Sounds give me the brush. Sounds like you're just about to live out your self-pity. Not make a statement. I can't have shit art on my conscience. To crush a man's dreams like that. <sighs> I hope you're there, happy. There, piggy. I guess art just isn't really you. Because you suck. In life and in everything. <laughs> well, y y just because it's true... 
doesn't mean you have a right to... No, it's fine. I'm aware of Cindy's living conditions. Why does that make my artistic intentions more clear? I mean, I am also now living in a shack and subsisting on scraps, so we, we are one and the same, Cindy. Love me, Cindy. Give me your brush. So there's almost no chance of me getting that brush. Is there, like, a replacement brush somewhere I can purchase? I'll catch you later. Love you. I'm gonna go around in her room again, just in case. There's more bonuses. Oh, her room is... I guess down here. Here's her room. A hundred tiny feet scurrying beneath the grate. The rats of the city. else to inspect here. All right. I have three points. I could increase my conceptualization further, but even with that, there's very, very low odds. A white envelope with the stamp attached to it to the upper right corner, rather, handed to you by Everard Clare. Inside are some legal documents with two names printed on them, Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. Both signatures are required. Plus one to logic. Insensitive bachelor party vibes, it really does. Uh, but it's super logical for a cop to be wearing this. <laughs> This tawny cone-shaped hat looks like a beacon of Samaran wisdom, its straws sticking up like antennas. Thank God you can't really see people's reactions when they see you strolling around in this incredibly insensitive headpiece. The Party Dragon. Plus one to drama, plus one to electrochemistry. Become the dragon, and also become an addict in a strange bathing robe. <laughs> This sleazy, silky bathing robe in vibrant blues features a roaring dragon on its front, ready to take off into the night. A red belt has been provided for fastening. It's culturally insensitive, but only for people who are not from Seol. The real Seolites probably don't care. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm not going to be wearing either of those things unless it's an absolute skill emergency. Even then, I'll feel bad about it. I'm assuming there's no other way I could have... Um, ...posited my, my need for her brush to her that does not result in me having this secondary skill check. But now that I've quicksaved it after the fact, it hardly matters. So I need to boost the hell out of my conceptualization. Was conceptualized. Hello again, officers. Yes. Have you come to admire it's a red check. So I can't do it again. Which means there kind of has to be either another brush somewhere in the city, or the, you just don't get to paint on a wall, which I guess is, is fair enough. It's not that big a deal if we miss out, but come on. seem to be limiting my conceptualization in any way. Can I boost it? With a Sa Saramirizian lounge jacket. Yes, I can. Sure. Lounge away. Oh, I'm gorgeous! This one to conceptualization. This one's like logic, right? Yeah, let's go over here. Slip into something a little dirtier, if you know what I'm saying. And that, that should be about as good as it gets. Hello Still again, officers. Very low. Have you come to admire my mural? 8%. Alright, we may as well try it. They do say the. Ouch. Okay. 
again, it might be one that I need to fail in order to later succeed at. But we'll try. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire... They do say the painter always paints his own portrait. It does feel like I can maybe get a bonus from this to increase my chances. But I'm not entirely sure. Third time's the charm. But it's also, it's a red check, so it's like, there's no bonus <laughs> in returning to that one. Maybe it leads into another skill check later, but even that seems like a dangerous Hello again, officer. Risk to take. Have you come to admire? They do say. Fair enough. I mean, it's not wildly important that I paint on the wall. It would just be super cool and neat of you. Hello again, officer. Go ahead and give me your paintbrush. Have you they do say. Try number five. Fifth time's the charm, as they say. Hello again, officers. This will be my last have you attempt. Come to you don't have the skills to execute oh, something like this shit. in practice. But, oh boy, the idea's going to blow her fucking mind. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a highly detailed skeleton of an ancient bird that went extinct a hundred million she years ago. Her eyes. And then, shh, shh, and then I'm going to paint it red using the heavy fuel oil, and then I'm gonna can light it on fire. On fire. Mm-hmm. It's the phoenix. Get it? I say, sod off. You don't have the technical skills to do that. <laughs> oh, come on. I was so excited. I'm sorry. Was the image offensive? Did you survive an avian attack as a child? Coco, oh, what's your problem? I thought you'd like my idea. To be honest with I like your idea. Should have thought of it myself. I don't need this kind of competition in my neighborhood. Damn, it was too strong. That's not fair, Cindy. Come on, art is bigger than either of us. I didn't realize you were so petty and insecure. Art is bigger than either of us. Don't you want to see that flaming then bird? Then get your brush from fucking art. Oops, my apologies. I guess I was trying too hard. You're a police officer and a grown-up. Why are you trying to impress her? Maybe try a different approach. I'm not just gonna forcibly take her paintbrush. That's that's gross and uncalled for. But is there another one in the city? Somewhere? <sighs> Alright, catch you later, Cindy. Talking to you and being devastated. I've got to know. Let me check real quick. I've got, I want to see this bird, even though I do not have the technical skill to pull something like that off. says Cindy's brush is essential. And apparently... <laughs> if I had failed that impossible conceptualization check, which I did four, four times in a row, and you tell her it's for a self-portrait, she will give you the brush. So I could have just gotten it that way. And now it's like... More difficult to get it from her. Because she's genuinely impressed by your idea. Oh no. And did I just quick save it after... After I succeeded? Or had I not quick saved it yet? Let's check. Maybe I didn't quick save it. Hello again, officers. Have you come oh, to admire I did. my mural? Alright. Well... So you have to have Cindy's brush. There is no other brush in the game. P provided this isn't like me just ripping the brush out of her hands. If I'm just like, come on. Yeah, I did. 
So let's see how it goes, and then we can load it again if it's not what we want. To do. And I need an aircraft carrier. So what? Stand your ground with a look of weary determination. Cindy, I'm going to stand here till, till you hand over that paintbrush. Sorry, I got distracted mid-sentence. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask you again. Give me the brush, please. Ah, I'm going to stand here till you hand over the paintbrush. That seems more like a peer-to-peer. -peer. I'm just going to annoy you until you give it to me. And this is like, come on. Come on, Cindy. Respect my authority as an elder gentleman with back problems. And I don't know which, which is more likely. I have back problems, Cindy. Please have give me the Have you got any kids? Because you sound like the world's saddest dad right now. I am, in a very real sense. Though childless, the world's saddest dad right now. Give me the uh, brush. Fine. Take the brush. Yes. I'm all out of fuel oil anyway. She drops the paintbrush at your feet. Well, that's a little unnecessary, Cindy. But good. We didn't, like, wrestle it away from her or threaten her. She just relented. I'm okay with that. You know what you've got in that fuel canister you scavenged from your canema? Red dyed heavy fuel oil. Time to get to proper work, artiste. Alright, catch you later, Cindy. Did I pick it up? Yeah, looks like I did. Items. A paintbrush belonging to Cindy the Skull, an aspiring artist. Its bristles smell nauseatingly of heavy fuel oil. Specks of red, orange, and green paint cover the aluminum ferrule. Okay. We got a brush. Kim is probably desperate to get to bed. Like, this is something I could do without him. Just as easily. So we could, we could just let him go to bed first. And then... And then come back and paint it. But no. Never. Hey, buddy. You yes? Okay? I don't know how exactly we, like enact him going to bed now. Because I used to be able to go to my own room and he'd be like, alright then, good night," and then I could leave my room and continue exploring. But now do I have to, like, go to the shack? And then he has to be like, alright, I'll walk halfway back across town to sleep, goodbye. <laughs> so it's like I don't really want to travel all the way out there. Just to have Kim travel all the way back to sleep, that seems sad. Pressing on with it. brush in your hand is like a loaded revolver. What will it be, Desperado? <laughs> Quite a few things come to mind. All right. Ah. Uh, what shadow lies there beneath the bright gleam? Draw a 3,500-year-old pictogram of a human being. Something beautiful is going to happen. No parking. All of these I like. What shadow lies there beneath the bright gleam the best? On guard! Oh, hell You've yeah. Spoken. The wall will now silently repeat the message for a decade or so until the sea air degrades the paint, adding another layer of detritus to the city. I got the achievement, Il Copo del Arte. And I could not be prouder. I have spoken. Very poetic. Real poetry. Should we return to our murder investigation? I hear there's a really bad one we are supposed to solve. You know, you, you're right. There is a really bad murder investigation we're supposed to solve, or the entire city is going to break out into civil war. But look at what I've created. My legacy that will live far beyond they've, when they find me in a ditch, over-medicated and pantsless. Alright, that didn't even take too much time. I, I love it. I want to live right here. Alright, so I'm going to try going to the hostel first and seeing if we can dismiss Kim 
from there and save him a lot of unnecessary calf pain having to walk back from the other side of the river. And if that doesn't work, we'll fast travel to the river. And it'll be fine. Ooh, I do have my sad, sad tape. Kim, can you stay up just a little longer for my sad, sad tape? Who do I speak with about this sad tape? Can I help you? Oh, hey, guard, I found a new bird for the whirling. I totally forgot about this. Uh, would you like a roughed grouse? I only roughed him up a little bit. What is this thing? The man takes the stuffed bird. Well, it's no biggie. I just thought it would look nice on the wall. I'm that kind of cop. What, the interior decorating kind? You know, I'm sorry. This is actually a nice bird. A competent piece of taxidermy. Thank you. I did not make it well, myself. I can fix it to the plaque and have a new bird in the establishment, I guess. So, I don't know. Thank you. I'm going to go with thank you. You're very welcome. Take my hand. Look into my eyes. European cheek kiss, go. People just don't know how to accept gifts. Especially taxidermy. He Especially likes taxidermy. He likes the bird. It solves his broken bird problem. You're welcome. I feel good about our work here today. It's all about the little things, like bringing people random stuffed animals. I know, right? It's not actually about that, but he liked it. All right, he doesn't seem to be able to enact the karaoke session for me. I'm not seeing any other um, interactables. That's just the stairs. How do I sing? How do I sing the song of my heart? Hmm. I'm not sure. Huh? This feels right. You belong here. <laughs> Gotta play the tape. Kim, what are you doing up there? Doesn't seem to be any visible reel-to-reel -reel tape player. But obviously this would be the place for it. Let me check upstairs, just in case. Not seeing anything up here. get into my room. I do not live here anymore. Maybe they'll finally fix the window now. So yeah, it does kind of seem like I have to take Kim across the river to my wind-blown shack. And then he has to walk all the way back alone. Which I'm sure is like the best part of his day. The being alone... we're not going to sing karaoke tonight. Let me check my journal, see if it has any clues for us. Sing karaoke. Get hold of a sad song on tape. We, we have that. Ask the cafeteria manager to perform. Okay, so I need to play the tape on a boombox to memorize the lyrics. Gotcha. That's what I'm missing. We have the tape. We need a boombox. I forget if that was at uh, the pollen shop, perhaps. But either way, not gonna happen tonight, and that's fine. So, I, I guess our only uh, choice is to go back across the river now and get him to bed. Get him to a nunnery. Um, is this close enough to the whirling to allow me to fast travel? Fisherman shacks. This is my first night in my new home, which I do desperately appreciate. A lily, little Lily, has the uh, ceramic gloves, apparently, doesn't she? 
This door is closed for today. Time to put the kids to sleep. Sure. I won't bother little Lily. About her gloves. It's getting late, and, and it's raining. Time to call it a day. Good night, Kim. I love you. Good night, officer. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. All right. See you soonish. I love my own. Don't look in the mirror. Don't shave. Stay far away from these things. I really do genuinely love it in here. It's much nicer than my hotel room. It's less trashed. I feel safe and loved in the fisherman's village. So, Kim has gone sleepy buys. I would love to spend a little bit more of the evening investigating this side of the shoreline, which will be both fun and nutritionally viable. As I plan to eat raw clams as we walk. But, I will save that for another day. Thank you for all of your time. This is such engaging game. I love every aspect of it. And especially now, as they're starting to coalesce more fully. We have made glorious art upon the walls. I feel my soul is satisfied. I hope that you have a lovely day. And I'll see you very soonish. Bye for now. Bye for now. Look at the back of me. Look at my detective cheeks. See you soonish.